Yes, please. We have seen uh, in the last uh, four months one of the biggest booms in the stock market that we've ever seen, led by, in four months, led by China, India, and Southeast Asia. The, the key thing right now on overall strategy, uh, we wrote an article three weeks ago calling, and the headline was, Solve the Chinese Puzzle and Stay Invested. And I think a lot of you over the last couple of days have seen these phenomenal numbers that have come out of China. Uh, you have uh, particularly led by infrastructure. Infrastructure in China and also the IMF is saying today China can increase the, inf the infrastructure spending because they've got to keep this thing going. And as a result of the infrastructure spending, all parts of Southeast Asia, uh, including Australia, are benefiting. Sure. But what has happened right now it, it is very interesting. The biggest push for the Chinese economy is the consumer demand that is going on in China. It's staggering. And some people feel that the growth that the you're going to get double digit numbers for the for China this year because of this huge domestic spending boom that is going on. Uh, the, what, what market is beginning to react after 26 years of, uh, of really nothing? Japan. And when you take a look at Japan, they've got some of the leading companies in the world. They, you never underestimate the Japanese. And some of these companies are doing, beginning to do exceptionally well in exporting and developing manufacturing for China. And so the key thing right now is, is that... Uh, which we wrote, and we haven't changed our mind, is that they're trying to solve this Chinese puzzle. Look what the president of China said this morning. He was going to take two trillion dollars. No, uh, uh, what I call, uh, confidence in the U.S. dollar. So as a result, why is copper two dollars and fifty-three cents today? Why did Freeport Macmoran come out with outstanding results? because commodity prices are beginning to move. Mm -hmm. And also, supply has been curtailed. So if, so if, if commodity supply is curtailed, it, and, and you have an economic uptick, you're going to get inflation. And when you think about it. So if, if we're going to get, uh, you know, 4.5%, uh, and even the Carney talked about it, and what happened? The Canadian dollar went from 85.5 to almost 91.5. Right. Like that. Yeah. Why? We know about commodity prices, yes, but it was suddenly Canada's coming back in spades, bubbling underneath because we got zero interest rates, or close to zero yeah, interest. Right. Carney is caught in a bind, a big bind, because if this happens, how can it, and, and growth begins to come back, how can he keep interest rates as low as he's talking about? He's got to raise rates at some time, and he says over the next year he's not going to do that. So inflation is going to come back. And the only way the Americans are going to get out of this mess is to inflate. And so therefore we've got, when, we, when we're looking forward over the next uh, uh, two quarters, uh, as we go into 2010, the, big, the key thing is the Chinese puzzle how growth is accelerating in China. They thought it was going to decelerate, you know, for a fact, and because yeah. I've seen these things out of Switzerland, they were talking 6% growth. Not what we're seeing right now. Hey, 7.9. So, I mean, yes, but now this, the, now this domestic side is boiling. Look at the number of cars that have been sold. Look at Honda, uh, Hyundai in, in, uh, in Japan have gone into overtime to build these things. Toyota's beginning to, to move. So I think this is a fascinating period that we've got to be very, very careful about. And you may say, why? Because always when, time, when times like this, uh, and you've got thin volumes, as we have, expect the unexpected. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank, Thank you, Joe, very much.